Hi, welcome back to the Retro Recipes Kitchen. Perry Fractic here, your friend in Lego in Retro. Yeah. Or as someone called me on Twitter this week, Purple Fractal. Now, back in parts one and two of the Brick 4 project, I started designing the fully Lego Commodore 64, including what I hope will become a working sprung mechanical keyboard and a fully Lego power pack and Commodore 64 motherboard, powering the real Lego LED. Now we have over a thousand supporters now on Lego Ideas, and we got this nice message from the Lego group, but we need 10,000 for them to mass produce this. Now I know, signing up to Lego Ideas is a bit of a... But you know what else is a PITA? This. Excuse me. Yes. Do you do the Lego Commodore 64? The Lego Commodore 64, actually not enough people voted for that one. Oh, I sad. So sad. I guess I'll just buy a Porg instead. Hmm, that'll make a nice Christmas dinner. Now, although it's not on the shelves, you can get hold of your very own Brick 4 executive desk toy, or case. Hmm, SX64 style, anyone? As of now. Yep, just head over to perifractic.com slash Brick 4 for all the options. My design is completely free and open source to use, or if you prefer, the Retro Recipes kitchen mites will do all the scurrying so you don't have to. And you can also grab Brixty4 merchandise like this, or these, at my store. And doing so really helps keep this small channel afloat on the retro seas, as does becoming a member of my Perifrac team on Patreon. I hope to see you there. Hmm, got pretty good pins for a bloke. But now in this episode, let's get building the finished product. And we'll see who's won it. Yep, we're going to pick the winner using random number generators, a robot finger, and the randomness of atmospheric noise and lightning. Welcome to Retro Recipes. So in the last episode, we found a way to install the real Commodore 64 motherboard and its peripherals into the Lego case. And I nearly killed myself trying to get the LED working. Which we did. And then we mounted the real Commodore 64 keyboard onto these Lego bricks, putting the bricks in Brick 64. So now we've achieved that, let's take it all apart again and replace them with a Lego motherboard and keyboard. Now keep in mind when you order these, sometimes the bricks are used and that really only affects these ones with stickers, so we'll take those off. And here's our battery pack that's going to power the LED, complete with these electrical terminals on the top that connect to the electrical brick. I'll show you that in a minute. Got some voltage regulators, capacitors, huh, part of a fuse, and some screws. Hey, that rhymes. And in here, I, I, I oh, just forget it. Ah, the tops of chips. And a fence. <laughs> when I'm Briggs T4. I hope you don't take offense at my singing. All right, let's build our PCB base. I don't know what this is, I think they sent me the wrong brick. But remember, there are no mistakes, just happy Lego accidents. And these are our mounting brackets for the battery pack. Seems good. And as before, I designed up instructions to help me and you build this. You basically put everything into steps. So here we've got steps involving four bricks, and then you just design up essentially what will become the PDF place all the elements where you want them for the easiest reference. 
You can download them from my site. Take a look for yourself. It's really fun here just watching the whole thing come together in LEGO Instructions form. So let's continue and we'll use those instructions and start with the cartridge port. Doesn't look like much right now. But here it's taking shape. I wonder if we could plug Jupiter Lander into that. And these lovely silverized, is that a word? Silverized pieces are the tops, the metallic top. And we mustn't forget our quality control stickers as well. And we'll do the same thing with the RF modulator. And then on to our video and floppy disk ports. Now I was criticized a bit in the last episode because I used a Stanley knife to break apart some awkwardly placed Lego bricks. So I bought this Lego brick separator tool. You can get this at my store. If only I could get it open. Yeah, sometimes you just need a Stanley knife. And it works like this. It's pretty neat. Reminded me of the movie Alien for some reason. All right, let's get screwing. This is our grounding plate that runs around the board. We'll test the continuity of that in a moment with the multimeter. <coughs> and of course our user and cassette ports. Oh, that is so cool. Here's what that fence was for. This of course is the keyboard plug. Yeah, you try and find a better match in Lego form. Don't be confused, it's just a fuse. But that piece doesn't quite stay on, so I'm gonna use this leg glue. We just dab a bit on there. It's completely water soluble, so we can always take it off again. And another bit on there. Clean it up. Hey presto. We've now got nine volts running to the board, probably. And let's get our capacitors in. Uh, I am experimenting with different sizes here because the taller ones can impede on the keyboard. And then whatever this thing is, I actually don't know what that is. Uh, if you know, let me know in the comments. Here's our voltage regulator heatsink and the regulators themselves. And our VIC2 circuit. Otherwise we won't be able to see anything when we plug this in. There's our PLA, our CPU, our kernels, and our two CIAs. I wish installing RAM was this easy in real life. And last but not least, the SID chip. Oh. And you know, as I'm working on this, I keep forgetting it's not a real motherboard. And now the battery pack that's gonna double as our power switch plate. Here's the Lego LED I used in the last episode, although I got a new cable after torturing the last one. And it just plugs onto the electrical contacts on the top here. And you'll remember in that episode, I realized the size of the case was a bit wrong around this port. So I'm just adjusting the power pack configuration to fit into the new space. In go our joystick ports. Wait, uh, mm, no, no, no. 
And finally, so we can plug it in, the power socket. It works. So cool. Fit that onto the bracket. see what I did wrong. I should have used a Lego multimeter. Yeah, silly me. I did pose a question on Twitter though when I couldn't get this board working. I asked if anyone knew why. Wait, what? And for anyone who's asked whether this thing is sturdy or not, well, I hope this answers your question. And don't worry, in time these Lego bricks will yellow to match the real Commodore 64 even better. Now, remember this discovery? Yep, the Commodore 64 keys use the exact same size axle as Lego bricks, and the bricks are essentially the same dimensions. So far, a lot of parts of Commodore 64s have been replicated. You've got the reloaded motherboard, you've got this keyboard base, and you can buy replacement cases, or of course the Brix D4 case. But so far, there's no keys available. So I genuinely want these to be options to complete that puzzle, so you can build an entire Commodore 64 from scratch. seems to be working pretty well. Let's design up our shift key. Wait, no, 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 how do I? Ah, my eyes! Shift, okay, that's better. There's no question mark in Lego bricks, so think of that as a little uh, perifractic signature. And all we do is clip the lettering onto the tops of the keys. I just can't get over this cross compatibility. I am convinced Commodore and Lego are in some kind of cahoots. There's no equal sign, so I've just used two underscores and placed one upside down. And our shift lock key just needs to be a little shorter. Nice. Run stop. I love that there's even a at symbol on the Commodore keyboard and in Lego form. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we've got some leftover letters. Hmm, why does that make me think of Porg? Remember this mounting plate that I used on the real RF modulator? Well, our LEGO modulator is in the same place, so we can mount the keyboard in the same way. Let's try typing on it. Dear Santa, please can I have another Brix D4 for Christmas? Thanks. Oh. Speaking of friendly computing, let's try the original Commodore case with those keys. See how it looks. Better than nothing. Well, as before, now we've completed that, let's take it all apart again and build the fully Lego spring-loaded mechanical keyboard. So again, I designed up instructions to help me and you build this. So let's build it.
that's too long. If only there was some double entendre I could use for that. Mm. Oh well. So I'm going to lay out these axles all in a row. And here's the magical piece. This is actually a shock absorber from the Star Guider Lego set way back in the 90s. Puppy dance. No, I said Star Guider, not Star Glider. Tch, amateur. Yes, and you can see here how the mechanism actually is working. Who knew? So now I'm just leveling up the keyboard so we've got some height as things ascend up to the number keys. And then we'll steal our keys off the real keyboard and drop them onto here. Yep, again, they're cross compatible. So you can buy whichever sets you want and mix and match with the real hardware. And again, it's pretty sturdy. This is it guys, the final brick that I can't seem to find anywhere. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Yeah, I'd put it down there. Never mind. Doesn't look too bad. I might swap out that space bar for something without those round pieces on it. And I had to uh, just cut the edge off the board because it was impeding on the power pack again. So I just used these diagonal bricks here instead. And it still works. Considering these are shock absorbers from a 90s kit, it's incredible what a good typewriter keyboard this makes. And it's incredibly soothing. Hmm, I think I've invented a stress toy. So now, let's put the whole package together. Yep, pretty strong. Let's turn it on. And off again. And on again. <laughs> this is fun. And when I turn it on, I expect the blue screen to appear. Hmm, maybe I'll design a LEGO 1084S monitor. Or I could even build a joystick like this. There it is, the finished Brix D4. Maybe your favorite, but it's not a Commodore 64. No, it's not. Mm. But if you vote for it, I won't get it. Hey, I like your thinking. <laughs> so now let's see who's won it. We had nearly 12,000 entries, and we're going to pick the winner in a very unique and very retro way using the randomness of atmospheric noise. 
a web-enabled Amiga 500, and a Wi-Fi robot finger, with each draw started by a puppy. You're a good girl. I chose a service that allows me to pick a winner using small variations in the amplitude of atmospheric noise. Now when I picked the last winner, I had Puppy Fractic stand on the keyboard to start the process, but this is what she looks like a few months on. Oh, and in case you wondered what she's reading, this is AMAG. It's a brand new Amiga disc-based magazine. Just came out this week, and I was really proud that they asked me to write a small article for it. But yeah, I don't think I want her stepping on the keyboard anymore. So I'm just gonna start the process myself and leave the rest to the robot finger and the atmospheric noise. Good luck, everyone. And we have our winners. So winning the full-size Brix D4 that I just finished is Max T from Great Br Britain. <clears throat> Congratulations, Max. And Francisco Z from Italia has won this Stormputer-inspired Lego case. Guys, drop me a comment below when you've seen this so I don't spoil the surprises, and then I'll get in touch by email and we'll figure everything out. Oh, and by the way, with each winning entry, I'm going to be throwing in a couple of these perfectly manufactured PCBs from PCB Way, because as we all know, PCB stands for Perifractics Contest Bonanza. And stay tuned, because in future episodes, along with my regular retro hacks and repairs, I'm going to be building up some more color variants of the case, maybe even building some new cases, perhaps for an Amiga or a, a Brick 20. I'll see you back here next time. Please let go and subscribe, like and subscribe, and comment below, and cheerio. What is this? <laughs> Star Wars.